These are nomadic males looking to join a pride, and they plan to take it by force. Unless he confronts these invaders, they will kill the youngest males and drive out the others. The whole pride has a stake in the outcome. are in their prime. Shumba and Farai sensing trouble head for cover. Kavingo has a choice to make, stand his ground or leave. Like most young males, these two were expelled from their birth prides at about Farai's age and have wandered after the herds ever since. But now they have their eyes on Kavingo's lionesses and his bountiful place at the spring. Kavingo, outnumbered, is still reluctant to give up his territory. But one of the new males takes the offensive. The 
battle is brief but decisive. A week later, they found one of the males badly wounded with the four lions from the pride next door hot on his heels. Although the two talkie talks had been heavily outnumbered, it was obvious from the look of the others that the pair had put up a brave fight. It was gang warfare, lion style. His brother had probably been killed. For the first time in his life, this male was on his own, and his injuries were fatal. He would prefer to avoid this encounter, and intends not to fight to the death, though the results may be the same. The savannah claims the young, the infirm, and the wounded. Pulled by opposing forces, the hyena is unhinged and urinates from the nearby object of terror. The king is dead. The great hallmark of a male is his mane. Testosterone controls the growth of this magnificent ruff, which advertises his status and protects his neck. But it's a nuisance in bushy country. Stress can make a lion lose handfuls of mane, but this one's having a bad hair day for a different reason. It's not a he, it's a she, a female overdosed with testosterone. Sometimes a male coalition has territories which encompass those of several prides. This big male has one overlapping the border of Botswana and Namibia. He strides round it confidently, watching for rivals who might slip in and try to mate with the females under his protection. The male lions assess the situation cautiously. There is nothing more dangerous in the African bush than a wounded buffalo. They send a lioness to test him out. The bull easily shrugs her off. The male launches his full 200 kilogram body onto the back of the bull. Pulling his legs clear off the ground, he gives the bull the full effect of his weight. I'm told that lions don't have to live in groups. They hunt very successfully on their own. They don't have to share the food they catch. But there are advantages. It's what's fascinating about them, isn't it? Their independence. Their eyes. It's its omnipotence that must come from sheer power, strength, independence, indifference, the real kings.